The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, Jesus said, As for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. They asked him, Teacher, when will this be, and what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And he said, Beware that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and in various places famines and plagues. And there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and, and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons. And you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance. For I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Amen. So her name is Betty White, and since age 13 she has been my spiritual director. And she's guided me through some really rough times, giving advice. Uh, when I was in college, she came and visited. When I was in Honduras, she stayed for a week and ate really terrible food really terrible food. <laughs> and when I was in Vinny School, I wrote actually a paper on this very passage talking about Mark's little apocalypse and how Luke uses it. The end is coming. So it happened over time, as I noticed, Betty, not the golden girl, Betty White, not the golden girl. Just wanted to make that clear. <laughs> We start losing words, losing thoughts, and bit by bit, her mind unraveled and felt she had complete dementia. And so I went and saw her at a rest home here in Asheville. And at this point, old, her eyes still sharp, so sharp, that piercing blue. A type blue that you look at and cuts right into your soul. And we sat there and I held her hand, her varicose veins almost like rivers on her arm. And we sat there and she had no idea who I was. No idea. So I sat and prayed with her and talked with her and eventually she said, well don't you realize, young man, I took that as a compliment, <laughs> don't you realize, young man, that every single day, every single day is someone's end times. Every day the apocalypse, yes, not you, you got a while to go. <laughs> But every day is someone's time to leave this earth. Every day. And we sat there in the way that only 
old friends can do, hand in hand. Her not knowing who I was, and me probably not knowing who I was either, but knowing that we shared that love. Which naturally leads me, because I said love, and I'm really bad at segues, <laughs> to when I was 18. When Canon Augusta was source ordained, she was a priest at Camp Henry with me. Or she was, the, I was the counselor, I wasn't the priest. <laughs> 18, and um, she got to watch me fall in love with a woman named Carolyn Rebollado, who at the end of the summer completely destroyed my heart. We're not going to be together. And um, she said, it's kind of a classic line, um, Thomas, we're leaving now, but understand, it's not you. <laughs> it's me. Now, contrary to what she said, it actually was me. <laughs> but she said, it's not you, it's me. I need something different in my life. So this is, this is the hard part. And um, I know many of you probably already know this, um, and I'll give you an example. Um, when I was first in Brevard, I had a headache, and I asked for some Tylenol at the office, walked across town to a group of complete strangers, and someone said, hey, Thomas, nice to meet you. How's your headache? <laughs> So many of you may know this, that I am stepping down as rector at St. Philip's. This last, um, last six months, I've been to the ER three times. I've been sick, um, and they can't figure out what's going on, and tests have gotten more and more serious. And I need to um, step down to take care of my health. Because I can't be the pastor I need to be for y'all. Nor can I be the husband and father to my kids. There's something going on that's really scary. And we're just going to figure out what it is. But I can't drag y'all through that because I can't be your pastor by going through this. And honestly... I swear, it's really not you. <laughs> it's me. Because I love y'all. At least 97%. <laughs> I love you. And I care for you so much. And this is so hard. And I've had to preach this three times, or it's my third time. But I love y'all. What y'all do in this community is absolutely amazing. How you come together to care for people is amazing. How you love one another is amazing. How you, oh God, I can look at people and know you disagree so much politically. But you come hug each other and share the peace. You love each other. And this is a community love which is breaking my heart to leave. But I've got to get healthy. But no, I love y'all. I love you. And this is... This has been one of the hardest days of my life. But every day is someone's end. But it's not an end of prayer and love and faith. What it is instead is an end of me being in a position where I've got so much medical stuff going on that I can't get clear until I figure it out. And I need to do that for my family. And um, this destroys me. And it hurts. But again, <laughs> it's not you. <laughs> It's me. It's me. Amen.